Hello everybody and welcome to I think we need to kick some Imperial ass. Yes, Gilly, we've already kind of discussed this, but thank you for the warning. All right. So hopefully we can sneak past these bastards and get to the Delta Quadrant. Damn, these Imperials have wasted no time setting up shop, I guess. But when you have an Imperial warship on your hands, I guess you're you're not for lack of such devices and whatnot. I mean there's plenty of room to carry all this crap on it. Oh here you guys are! I see you to run ahead on me. Thanks. Yeah, it's called trouble. Uh, Estinia, you're kind of blocking the view of everybody else. I mean, maybe that's your point, but... Our objective lies at the heart of the Isle. The third will remain to guard the ship. While the second patrols the perimeter and eliminates any threats. The first will come with me to secure the research facility. Let no man doubt the import of our mission. The Alagans found a means to capture icons alive. And their knowledge lies hid upon this isle. Are we absolutely sure about that though? I mean, it's a really good guess, but... Unless this knowledge that they're keeping in here is somewhere in our history books or whatever, or we, should we really be banking on this? If we can but acquire it, we would be able to prevent the beings from returning to plague us, thus ending the cycle of rebirth. Gee, because that's worked so fucking well five years ago. I need not remind you that success will raise our legion high in the Emperor's regard. Yet, by the same token, his radiance does not tolerate failure. That is all. All troops, prepare for deployment! So, we're either gonna be the most awesome, or we're all gonna fucking die. Goody. Great motivational speech. So that is their purpose. What else did you think they were here for? To think that the knowledge used to bind no lesser being than Bahamut sleeps here. Uh, Alphano, you should have told her this. They, they kind of already, like, when we met Emperor Varus himself, like, one of the first things he said was, Oh, we want the same things, we just but disagree on the solution to the problem. The primals cannot be suffered to live, blah 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 blah, that kind of shit. We went through this already. Imprisoning a primal in such a manner would represent an effective means to halt the cycle of summoning, were it not for the grave and obvious risks. Indeed. We need but refer to past experience, that of Bahamut's calamitous return, to see why this is not the solution we seek. Held in duress, a primal will continue to nurse its hatred for mankind, and when it inevitably breaks free, its rage will be beyond quelling. Whatever folly the Garleans mean to commit, they can wait. We must remain focused on our task. Yeah. 
Yes, of course. It would not be polite to keep the Archbishop waiting. But, but to, be a, to be a little bit fair to the Empire here, even though we know from experience, you know, the whole Bahamut thing, and that was probably not the greatest of ideas, at the same time, it took 5,000 years. That's pretty damn good for a somewhat long-term solution to the problem. So, even though it's not forever, and I'm like wandering around aimlessly, right now, does anybody have any better ideas? Like, not that I really agree with the Empire in, in, its, in its entirety, but... Again, 5,000 years is a pretty goddamn long time. You know, give and it actually gives like plenty of time to find out an alternate solution to the problem, um, which may or may not work out. But by the time you know, you're all gonna be dead anyway. I mean, yeah, yeah. Let's think about the future of the planet and mankind and all that stuff. Blah 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 blah. But yeah, whatever, whatever. I mean, I don't think it's the right thing to do, but. Again, at the same time, I'm, I'm not really going to entirely bl place 100% blame and think they're 100% in the wrong. Because from their point of view of the, you know, the Empire, their solution is better than anything we've got right now. So, yeah. I mean, we can spew all we want about blah, 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 this is not the right way, blah, blah. Well, we don't have any fucking better ideas. G Gilly? Gilly? Are you okay? Hi guys! Sorry I kinda have to murder you and all. I, I have no beef with you, well at least at the moment. But I got bigger fish to fry. And weren't you guys after the Archbishop too? I mean, let's make friends and, and team up for the time being, shall we? Yeah, they actually kind of kind of drop that point. Maybe I guess it doesn't matter anymore because the Imperials are in. But I'm guessing the reason they were after the Archbishop in the first place is because we, we were we were all after the key. And considering we're all in here now, well, who has the key is a moot point, you know? Oh, Gilly, Gilly, Gilly. Well, we should have seen this coming. Or well, there's a few, there's more. That would explain my men's silence. Yeah, sorry about that. We meet again. And this time, we will not be interrupted. Are we so sure about that? a disconnect um, in the middle of this causing me to obviously die I have to restart this and I have the power of the echo so I'm kind of cheating here um, plus I have protect on but I'm actually not caring in this instance because of the fact that um, this instance actually is rather challenging and if you start taking too much damage they will not be able to keep you alive and obviously this goes double for classes that don't really have um, as much of ability to keep themselves healed. Uh, but what I really like about this is 
that our companions are actually actively fighting with us in here. So that's really kind of nice and awesome and whatever. It's not just leaving it to me and they're all scuffle off and, you know, by way of cutscene magic handling something else. So now his cronies are gonna jump into battle, but we don't need to do anything with them. The rest of our team is gonna handle them just fine. Remember, slaying primals and legatuses is kind of our day job, so yeah, this becomes our responsibility. So you can entirely leave them alone. You don't need to worry about them whatsoever. So eventually there's gonna be more and Yastrola is gonna leave and take care of that. Uh, she'll still be able to heal you um, if you're close enough to the outside. Uh, and Astinian's also gonna jump in and out and start helping uh, take care of that as well. So now we have our first appearance of the Obsidian Carbuncle. So yeah, Elphino wasn't kidding when he said he learned a thing or two back there. Uh, it functions exactly the same in battle as That's not good for me, as um, as Ruby and um, and Topaz does. I was kind of pissed that them went, that actually got in, uh, in the way there. You actually want to knock these Cerulean tanks out of the ring. They'll make things so much easier for you if you do, because you do not want them exploding, and any of his AOEs will explode them. Yeah, it's one of the things I took a long time to figure out, because the ones that appear in, for example, um, Keeper of the Lake, that are that size do not are not able to be moved only the small tanks are so it's kind of a little bit shitty that the game is inconsistent on that but thankfully any attack will knock them out so they will make them a moot point and it'll be so much more easier to stay alive because now you get to like bait the you know you'd have to bait all not only all these away um from him but also his uh his little bleed circle on the floor and it just becomes too much of a pain in the ass and you will have more difficulty staying alive than you need to. And it still hit one anyway, but I don't care. We'll still be fine. But yeah, you like you like you like you could see you 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 start taking a lot of damage very quickly in here. Dumbass, will you fucking heal me? Fine. Cheating and benedictioning myself. What the fuck, Alphano? I'm literally standing right next to you. There we go. You know, I'm trying to make a point that, you know, you're not as shitty the healer as everybody says, and you fuck me over. I had heard the tales of your strength warrior of light and now that i have experienced it firsthand van balesar's defeat seems less inexplicable you are a formidable foe and i have thoroughly enjoyed our time together alas all good things must come to an end alagan's secrets await and there is no profit to be had in remaining here. Well, not if I get to the damn teleporter first. So, running off like a bunch of chickens again, are we? You know, the Allegon secrets are going to be worth nothing if the Archbishop and his cronies um, actually get away with them first. So, maybe make friends, we'll kick their asses together, and then we can duke it out afterwards, old this Guardian style. Huh? 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 What do you say? No? Okay, fine, fuck you.
coward. Yeah, I'm with the Stinian on this one. It would seem we have no choice. You must continue on. We will hold them here. Where's the fluffy obsidian? Take the eye. It should still hold enough energy to be of use to you. But will I be able to harness its power? I shall join you as soon as I am able. Being cool on you to be a bro and all. Enough talk. Make haste and stop the Archbishop. Yeah, I have wonder if, um, and, and again, this is this is more just a thought rather than a rant. Um, if Obsidian Carbuncle wasn't kind of a last minute addition, because if you notice, he's not in this cutscene. And it's comparison to the last time we obviously had an incest like this, where Ruby Carbuncle was very proudly on display in the immediate cutscene following. So that's t that's just a little weird, but just a random observation. Um, it's not really that much of a consequence, not much consequence to anything. Um, just something I kind of noticed. Maybe you should show that thing to Master Matoya, though, huh? I mean, I mean, you did talk about maybe creating another species of carbuncle, and you kind of did. So good on that. So we have finally made our way to the Delta Quadrant. And hopefully our friends would be A-OK. -okay. Ah! So this is the dragons that Estinian was sensing. All right. Oh no! Gilly, why didn't you tell me this in the first place? Unless obviously the mechanism to which to get there is only here and Gilly didn't know. Midgard Somer, where the fuck have you been? Yeah, we kind of know. Now, obviously, they can't really expose on it here, but um, in in later patches, they do have flavor text. Um, based on if you based on if you have or haven't done the binding coil, but surprisingly and disappointingly, it's not mentioned here. Uh, because if you obviously did coil, you know exactly what has already gone on with the oligons, their exper you know their experiments, you know Bahamut becoming a primal and all that all that stuff and. Like, 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 we know very well the, the horrors that Allag has done to the dragons. Not only from just Bahamut, but, um, but say from Twintanya, who had the neural links on, and, and creatures like Kalia, who is the eternal loving boss. So, unfortunately, I think we have to go the long way around here, but even if we don't, let's do it anyway. And we can see all sorts of dragons that are up here. But yeah, like, where the fuck has Midgar Somer been this entire time? Now, I, c I can completely understand how that, you know, you are technically still under his guidance and being tested by him, so he can't really give his opinion to you because, well, you can't really prove your worthiness if he's trying to, to push you in one direction or the other via, e via either words of encouragement or discouragement. I understand that. However, there is a scene, obviously, very early on, back when we very first ac uh, get regain access to our first Crystal of the Light, and he's like, hmm, okay. And I really wish there were more scenes of that, just so we could get more, uh, and I know I talked about this when we did Soul Mall. A little bit more introspective on how he feels about this whole thing, 
especially, you know, after we've already not only spoken and met with Reis Vulgar and learned kind of his a little bit feelings on the matter of the peace and, you know, whatnot. But not only that, we kind of murdered the fuck out of Nidhogg. Like, and he, 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 there, there's nothing for the player to see or hear what he thinks about this. And I think that kind of takes away from his character a little bit. I mean, on the one hand, I can kind of understand him remaining this this ominous force and that you, you, you really don't understand his motivations. I can kind of understand that a little bit. But at the same time, he's been following us this entire time. Like, it's a complete waste of his character to have him just follow us and just be waiting and watching and doing nothing and not seeing any sort of reaction out of him, ambiguous or not. Like, you almost forget he's even been here until now. And I think it would have been just really interesting to get a little introspection, at least for the player benefit, if not necessarily for the Warrior of Light's benefit, to actually kind of, kind of see inside his head of, you know, this extremely ancient fucking creature. I mean, we, we're already associated with a creature who's just as ancient. Her name is Heidelin, for fuck's sake. So, I mean, it would maybe give some introspection on, you know, not only Midgard Zomar, but Heidelin herself as well, you know, beings that are this goddamn fucking old. Um, hi, my name is Nameless Protagonist. Who are you? She recognizes him. Cutscene exposition time. The Yeah, remember what uh, Louis Swa said about, you know, Bahamut rising from the abyss of death? Yeah, he was recently deceased when that happened. Let's 
Yes, but how? I mean, Heidelin's been bitching about this for, about this for since like ever, but the mechanism of how is is in question here. I mean, besides, you know, how we murdered the hell out of Nabrielis, but that took a hell of a lot. No more an no one ill an, no eight king. Time for another Hollywood heart attack, guys. This can only mean one of two things. Which means my blessing has been restored. Heidelin? Mom? Hi, can you hear me? Warrior of light. Beloved daughter. The light abideth within thy heart again. Yay! Full valiantly didst thou overcome thy many trials. But glory not in thy success. Well, the villains have scored a bunch on us, so no, we're not going to do that. The servants of darkness are ever close at hand. Receive of me my blessing once more. And go forth to shine thy light on all creation. broken down the wall I built around thee, and partaken of thy mistress's blessing once more. Strong art thou, mortal, stronger than any other of thy kind. I'll take that as a compliment. Having looked upon thy deeds, I am convinced. Thou art worthy to bear her light. Now here's the problem, Maker Zomar. That wasn't your call to make from the beginning. It was Heidelin's. The covenant bound me to thee, but would seem our fates were mingled from the first. Though I will not fight thy battles, I will yet lend thee my wings. Well, he just went through dragon puberty. Okay. Come, mortal. We go to cast out the darkness. And he even comes with reins and a backpack and everything. Oh, Midgard Soma, you're awesome right now. I'm really freaking hungry right now.
So not only do I get I myself a snazzy new mount, but because everything is all based on uh, main story quests in here, we now have the ability to fly in this zone. Hooray! So now we actually do have access to the flagship, which I'm going to take care of before I end this episode. Um, just so I can conclude a bunch of things. So, yeah, I'm just going to talk briefly about our encounter with Tiamat. Now, um, some might be disappointed to find that Tiamat is not multi-headed, but the multi-headedness of Tiamat in various incarnations in Final Fantasy games is actually an adaptation stolen pretty much directly from Dungeons and Dragons. Uh, Tiamat herself is Babylonian or something like that in origin, and where she is generally known as a Chaos Mother. Uh, which is reflected in the fact that she and Bahaman have re uh, reared in uh, innumerable children. And she's also um, taught us a little bit about the primals, uh, which Race Fogar kind of went into just very, very, very briefly. But basically... Literally, they're just all made up. Like, literally all you need is um, fervent prayer and... Obviously, the necessary uh, aether, usually in the form of crystals, is the most common way. And bam, you can make yourself a primal. So you can make primals literally out of fucking anything. Anything, as long as you have those two things. Which is kind of a scary thought. But at the same time, it certainly puts like incidences like with uh, King Mog or Shiva or Phoenix. And even Enkidu as well. Even though I have not done the Hildebrand quests for this channel. But yes, the devs actually did confirm that Enkidu is a primal. At least in this incarnation. So yeah, it kind of puts that all into pers pers perspective. And maybe, not that it really helps us in the whole how do we deal with the primal problem. Um, but at least gives us some um, explanation for how the primals are formed and made. And kind of fills in the gap of how earlier pretty much our definition of primal before was just these godlike beings that the general the the beast tribes worship and that's really the only definition we had to go on now we have a little bit more information to go on which i'm sure was going to be helpful in some sort of context but for now it isn't uh it's better than no information but we're still no better off in this immediate moment than we were you know, 20 minutes ago, uh, without knowing that. So yeah, kind of a scary thought. Yeah, put the quest marker up, thank you. Aw, we will. So now we have access to our level 60 dungeon and our where our quest ends, where we believe the Archbishop and his cronies to be, the Aetherochemical Research Factory. Uh, more specifically, we're headed toward a Triad Control, which is located in the facility. That's where the most amount of energy is being consumed or, or whatever. So this is our best bet to start looking. Obviously, I do have a lot to say about what's been going on in the past few quests, and obviously I'm waiting for the dungeon in which to explain this so thank you for watching my friends and we shall hopefully hopefully find uh the source of our immediate troubles inside there and hopefully kick their asses so thank you watching for watching my friends and i shall see you there